Hi everyone, it's Glenda from Style with Glenda K. Harrison and welcome back to another edition of What's on the Rack. Today I want to share some tips on how I style a statement piece. Now, I always want to put this disclaimer out there. I'm assuming that because you follow my blog or me on Instagram or Facebook that you like or the way I dress resonates with you. So these are how I style statement pieces and not everyone follows the same fashion rules. But to answer your questions in your head, if you're wondering how does she do that or how does she get that together or what's her thought process, Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly what I do. The first tip is put other colors on mute. The mute button is very important when styling a statement piece. And the look that I wanna show you is one that I wore on the blog. Right now, well, the statement piece is this colorful, fun skirt. And if you remember me wearing it on the blog, I had a crinoline underneath it, so it was really wide and it was fun. It was twirl worthy. So right now, it's very colorful. This look looks like a bag of Skittles exploded on it. With the skirt, with the bright orange jacket, and with the white necklace. What some people have a tendency to do is, when they see a garment that is filled with color, they go, oh my gosh, I want to bring out every color that I see. In this skirt, there's orange, various colors of orange, various colors of hot pink, there's green, there's black, there's white. There's a lot going on. So what I do is I put the other colors on you. So what I would do is remove the jacket Take off the necklace. And right now, the skirt pops. So this is the off the shoulder top that I wore on the blog. The simple skirt. And then you wanna style it with a simple sandal or pump. Something that doesn't have a lot of busy detail, but I enjoyed wearing it with this very, very naked sandal. No bells and whistles, because when you're wearing a piece like this, this is enough. You don't need to have a fuchsia colored necklace and, and green shoes, a green handbag. Just let the skirt speak for itself. And then if you feel like you need a cover up, like you're going out in the evening, choose a cover up in the same muted as the black. And then you have your outfit you're good to go. So that's put the other colors on mute. The next tip is avoid competition. With this leopard skirt, with this leopard dress, this dress is the statement. And what I've seen some people do is they say, okay, I have a leopard dress, so I'm going to carry a leopard handbag and I'm going to wear leopard shoes. And then I'm gonna get my fingernails done in a leopard motif. Well, that's way too much leopard. And the problem is with that is leopard is like black or blue. It's hard to match it. There are so many variations of the leopard print. So you don't wanna mix it up because it just looks like you kinda of just I don't know, threw it on and didn't think about it too clever. So the best way to style a leopard statement piece, like a dress or a skirt or a pair of trousers, is to keep it simple and avoid competition. The way I styled this dress was with a pair of boots. A nice, classic, no fuss pair of boots. You can also get away with um, the very naked sandal that I showed down here. But by doing this, like I said, tip number two is 
you avoid the competition. And then I want to go further with that tip number two, avoid the competition. Now this suit is definitely a statement piece. You don't have to do anything but wear this suit and people will say, wow, it is a bold, busy floral pattern. And right now, I have it styled with a waterfall necklace. This waterfall necklace to me is a statement piece. So now the two are competing with each other. You've got this bold necklace and you've got this bold pattern. If you walk into a room, people are going to just be like, oh my gosh, where am I supposed to look? So what I suggest is remove the waterfall necklace and save this for something that's quiet. Style it with a simple white top. And then if you want to wear a necklace, I would suggest wearing a necklace that is simple, doesn't have any fuss and bells and whistles, and is more delicate. That way, you're avoiding the competition. So you have this simple drop necklace with a little pearl on the end, and the pearl color just picks up that soft color beautifully. And then if you wanna go any further with the accessories, you can get a hat. Now that hat is not competing at all because it's a flat, basically one color, and it picks up that blue beautifully. And then a shoe would be like this simple slide in the denim chambray color. So that's how you would style something as bold and statement making as this suit. That's tip number two still, avoid the competition. Now my next tip is, it's one of the funnest ones that I enjoy doing, and that is create a theme. <clears throat> Many of you saw me do it with the post I did called About a Bag. This is an oversized wicker bag. You can either carry it with the short handle or it does have the crossbody handle inside. And it has the two little raffia, little, um, what do you call these things? Pom-poms hanging on the outside. So it's big, it's bold, it makes a statement on its own. When I carry a bag that's this, this large, because I'm a petite woman, I want just the bag. I don't want to have other busy stuff going on around me because then I'll just feel too overwhelmed. So I created a theme around this bag and it was a Southwestern theme and the pieces were scaled back. I wore a simple peplum cami, a pair of white jeans, and then I had the bag. And then I had on a Southwestern hat. So that is tip number three, create a theme. Now my final tip is tip number four, and that's what you just saw in Sunday's post called Matrix. And the tip number four is do the unexpected, and that's what I'm wearing now. I have on a pair of green embroidered satin booties that came from Zara. And I fell in love with them the moment I saw them. They are a great departure from my shoe collection. I don't have any green shoes. And to have them as a booty definitely makes a statement. And when I saw them, I immediately went through the Rolodex of my clothing in my mind and started thinking of ways that I could style them. Now, most people would say, 
oh, satin, it's probably more evening, um, things that are more pristine, that have shine to them, like, you know, a, a great pair of trousers that, that you would maybe wear out for an evening event. But for me, I wanted to do the unexpected. And I styled my boots in a pair of washed crop denims with the bell on the end because with the bell flaring out, it just kind of makes you say, look at the boots even more. And then a white flowing top that is tiered. Um, I did a DIY on it. They were bell sleeves, but I made the sleeve into a regular sleeve because I didn't want a white bell sleeve, you know, trying to eat and stuff. It would just be a mess. So anyway, the look that I created was unexpected and it resonates with me. This is how I would dress. I um, am very bohemian. I'm, I like the art scene and I like to be um, a little bit creative, but classic. Um, it's a mixture of things in there. And so this look resonated with me and I did the photo shoot in a dirty alley. The alley was disgusting. It, the walkway was stained. There was trash. The it, it just looked dirty. And I loved it because it was an oxymoron. It created such a powerful look for these boots because it was such an unexpected location. And those are my tips. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of What's on the Rack. And be sure to stop by the blog, so what to 20blogspotcom And of course, please go to my new website, Style with Glenda K. Harrison. That web address is glendakharrison.com. And before we go, I just want to say that it was very difficult for me to do this What's on the Rack this morning because I feel like talking about fashion when so many people are going through struggles right now is, it seems just almost wrong. Um, this is a heartfelt prayer and thoughts to all of our friends who are in Texas and Louisiana. I have a lot of friends and followers who live in those areas and I am just hoping and praying that everything comes out right for all of you during this time. And remember people, there are a lot of charities who are giving, who are giving toward this, this tragedy. And I hope that you all, no matter what you can do, if it's prayer, or if it's donating, I hope that we can all do something. So thank you for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful remainder of the day. Amen.